morning. Welcome back to Taylor Time Live. I'm your host, Seth Gladden, and today we are starting a brand new three-part series on the science of selling adhesives. So we named it The Sticky Truth. Um, again, it will be a series and we'll be looking at a lot of uh, chemistry, terminology, some different things that we get asked a lot as an adhesive manufacturer by our customers, our clients, um, installers. So some of this you will probably know, but stick with us, pun intended, as we go through this series. Um, and I guarantee you will learn something. So today I'm excited because I'm joined by Shelly Ackerman, who's back with us again. Shelly, thanks for being in the studio. Good morning, Seth. Thanks again for having me. I'm of, a glutton for punishment. Of course, I know I see that, <laughs> so I'm taking advantage. So All right. Um, no, it's great to have you back. And I think, you know, uh, you definitely bring a perspective um, and experience and expertise to this topic of adhesives, selling adhesives. Um, you've sold flooring, you've done some different things. If you did miss it, I would encourage you to please go back. Uh, we had an episode called A New Perspective on Adhesives that Shelly was on. Um, and she gave a walkthrough of kind of her career and how that shifted her perspective of uh, flooring adhesives throughout different types of, um, I guess, jobs that you've held in, in mm -hmm. the industry. So would you mind telling us just briefly, give us this, the short recap of Absolutely. what you've done and what led you here? Sure. Um, so again, thanks for having me. Um, my career has taken me from a specifier on the interior design side, knowing hardly anything about adhesives, to working for a major flooring manufacturer where we would recommend product adhesives and uh, having a little bit of knowledge and then now obviously working with Taylor and we make adhesives. So um, it's, it's been quite a journey and um, I'm looking at it from the lens of kind of all of those things and kind of making it a relatable. Yeah. Taking maybe some of the science out of adhesives and just yeah. making it a conversation. So we'll, I'll put the science in, you take it out. Fine, Make it easy done, to understand. Yeah, done. deal. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I do encourage you to go back and check that out. It's called A New Perspective on Adhesives. Um, that was earlier this year. Also this year, we had an episode called Would You Like Fries With That, which you actually titled. That was, that was fun. Yes, um, absolutely. It's a major food group. Yep. And, and, you know, that one was a great episode as well, just on the concept of just that add on sale, right? If you're going to sell flooring anyway, why right. not just go ahead and do it? Ask the question, how are you going to install this floor? Do you need adhesive with that? Right. Yep. So those are awesome episodes to check out. But today, as promised, we're starting this three part series on the sticky truth, right? We are. So we will be talking about some science, some chemistry, things like that. So Shelly, it's great to, great to have you here. Before we get into kind of um, our topic of the day though, why is this series important? Seth, I think the series is important again to m make it relatable. I mean, hopefully at the end of this, whether you stick stick with us for one part, two parts or three parts, you know, you could be a lot of fun at a cocktail party by, you know, knowing some of these terminologies and maybe knowing a little bit of history of some adhesives. Um, but again, ultimately it's to give you that confidence. So you know that you're making the right product recommendation for the right application with the right product. At the end of the day, that's our responsibility as a manufacturer to you. Um, to give you that confidence so you know, but you know, guess what? There's also resources. If you don't know, you know, there's technical experts, there's people yeah. a lot smarter than us. And guess what? I think a lot of our audience may be able to fill in some blanks of some things that we don't know as well. Of course. Yeah. And you know, it's important to note that we're not necessarily experts, but we work here in the field. You know, we know a few things and hopefully that can help somebody as we go along. So. And you keep asking me and I keep showing up. So I know, <laughs> I know, but you're, you're perfect for it. So, you know, really um, adhesives are, are kind of fascinating, right? So I know uh, when we were talking about this show and this series, um, something that, that I think you looked into a little bit is kind of the history of, of adhesives, right? Like where did they come from? When were they first used? So yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. It's it's kind of weird. When you first asked me to do this, I thought, well, you know, I think deep down we all kind of take things for granted or there's also that history buff in all of us that, you know, we may take for granted or you think about all the things you learn in school that you like to forget or you have probably have forgotten. <laughs> but, you know, why were history or why were adhesives even invented? And, you know, you think back to and I love this photo. I mean, the ancient Egyptians, they actually made adhesives from birch bark and eggs to help mm. glue their tools together as they're building the pyramids. So, yeah. you know, think about primitive forms and what is an, adhe an adhesive, the basic definition 
of an yeah. adhesive is sticking two things together. So um, again, ancient Egyptians, you know, brilliant engineers, scientists, they developed adhesives. And then you think about too, as that technology progresses, I mean, we don't make adhesives out of birch bark and eggs anymore. You know, it's all kinds of... Um, At least not in flooring. <laughs> not in flooring, yes. There, there may be something that's yeah. still made with eggs, but, you know, I suppose if you're going the totally organic Food grade, route, yeah. Yeah, you, you could yeah. make your own adhesive, you know, out of eggs, I suppose. Um, but, you know, the history of adhesives, you take some really cool modern science and technology, and then you fast forward that to today where we're, you know, bonding you know, electronics together or things like that. So yeah. a lot of work happens between the ancient Egyptians and, you know, 2023 where we're sitting at today. But, you know, that's just kind of the, the overview. And you think about, too, some accidental things that happened, you know, on the way to, of, of yeah, adhesives. Yeah, so, you know, it's interesting you say that. A lot of adhesives actually were born out of, you know, which which is true, actually, of a lot of products. A lot of you, things are happen, if you look into them, happen by accident. Yeah. Like super glue, right? right, was actually invented by someone trying to make... Um, clear gun sights for, I believe, World War II, mm -hmm. and then abandoned the formula because he was like, this isn't what I need. Right. And turns out here we've got super glue now that you use for everything. Okay. So. Well, and I think the other example, too, is a post-it note. I think we've all heard that story. The post-it notes were developed by accident because yeah. it just did not stick or was not sticky enough. Yeah. And, you know, we use post-it notes for everything. Yeah. In, enter the uh, the pressure sensitive adhesive, right? Right. Yeah. Another segue, <laughs> and we'll talk about that. I'm sure at some point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that that is fascinating, and I hope you know, like you said, maybe you can be the most the most interesting person at the cocktail right. party. Or, you know, <laughs> yeah. For this amount of time, and yeah, then everybody else is going to exactly. be bored to death. But. Yeah. <laughs> maybe we'll try to get some jokes in here next. You know, in in the next series. Right. Um, so, you know, as we as we like you said, we fast forward out of the history of adhesives. Obviously now in today's world, there's a ton of types of adhesive. So let's spend just a moment. I know you did some research on this too. Um, what are some of the different types of adhesives that are out there and, and, and why are there so many types, I guess? Absolutely. You know, again, back to the definition and adhesive is sticking one thing to another thing and, and gluing them together. Um, you know, as I was trying to develop some of this program today, it was, you know, adhesives like Elmer's glue, you know, we've used those in school. It's adhesives like rubber cements, you know, used with a, a small brush. All of those things have very specific purposes and uses. Um, there's also adhesives that, um, you know, you can, you don't probably use and you don't even think about it, that are holding your um, liner of your cereal together in your cereal bag or your popcorn bag. There's adhesives that glue bridges and roads together. I mean, Adhesives are all around us, and I think here's just a random fact. Again, another fun fact for a cocktail yeah. party. Paints are basically an adhesive. It sticks. You roll it on the wall, and it sticks, and it changes the color of that wall, and that is a, a another form of an adhesive. Yeah, I've kind never of like a, about it that like way. a single-sided. A single-sided yeah. adhesive, exactly. Okay, interesting, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and there are so many types. I mean, you, you talked about like the elementary school, like, you mm -hmm. know, we're, we're introduced at a young age to a glue stick and a rubber cement yep. can. Why they still do that, I don't did you, know. Did you eat glue? Were you, were you, <laughs> you a know, glue you might, eater as a kid? By looking at me, you might wonder, <laughs> you know, or hearing me talk maybe, but um, but no, I actually never did. I had, you know, I watched other people do it and right. thought, why? Yeah, why? Right. <laughs> no one <laughs> dared smelling you? smelling the Sharpies. Right. Like, exactly, yeah. Um, Sniffed glue? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Explains a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, but then, but then, like you said, there's so many applications. It is hard to find actually a product in today's world that doesn't include an adhesive of some sort. Exactly. I mean, you've got, like you said, bridges and dams. I mean, things that people normally wouldn't think of that have adhesives. Mm -hmm. Electronics, our cell phones, obviously, like cars, everything that we do. Right. You know, furniture. It's furniture. All, clothing. It, yep. Almost everything has an adhesive. So um, that's good news for us, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So flooring, um, you know, as, as we take a look at uh, kind of narrowing that down, right? And thank you for the research on that, by the way. Those are fun facts. It's cool to, cool to know. Um, as we look at market applications in flooring, obviously that's, you know, kind of a broad, but, but we've brought it at least to flooring. So give me a picture of that just quickly, and, and then that will help us understand why all of this stuff we're about to discuss is important. Absolutely. Um, you know, so the different um, market applications and um, types of 
um, flooring and the different, sorry, the different applications that you have for flooring products. You know, whether it's in a high rise, it's a supermarket, it's a school, it's residential construction, all of those, you know, gravity, we're walking on flooring. They're all market applications for different types of flooring products. But because all of those flooring products that you would use in a space may require a little bit of a different type of adhesive and there's science behind all of those different adhesives. Very rarely can you find an adhesive that will do all things for all types of flooring right. that will have different applications. So, you know, I mentioned commercial spaces, heavy rolling loads in supermarkets or hospitals, and then, you know, again, residential, where you've got a hardwood um, installation and you're walking on it with your slippers, whether you're a shoeless house or not. Um, those are kind of the two extremes yeah. of the different market applications for flooring. Yeah, so there's a lot of places, you know, uh, I, I remember when I first I think I've been in flooring now for almost eight years, which isn't that long comparatively to to a lot of people I meet and the joke of, you know, once you're in, you're in, right? Right. You're stuck. But when I when I know, right? There it is. Um, when I first got into flooring and was telling friends and family, you know, what I what I was doing for work and they're like, Oh, that that's a that's a job. Right. And I was like, I mean every Every building has a floor, yeah, right? And they're like, down. oh yeah. Right. And it's just kind of like, it's so interesting, the outside mm -hmm. perspective, you know, before you get into flooring of like, oh, that's a career to like install flooring or right. to, to sell, mm -hmm. you know, adhesive or, or whatever it might be. So, but really there are a lot of applications. Um, and I think it's interesting why all of those different applications need a different type of flooring and, and why that's important. So hopefully as we go through today, will discover and help people watching discover um, what those differences look like and what the important information is, right? So, and I, I think it'll also lead to other questions, too. Yeah, hopefully. And I got a squeaky chair. You do. So, you win. <laughs> you know, it's all right. I guess we need less adhesive and more WD-40. <laughs> right. um, but, you know, as we look at those market applications, it does bring us to different types of adhesives that perform differently, that have different characteristics and different um, attributes. So uh, could you give us a quick list and then we'll come back and talk through them, but a list of some of the ones we're gonna discuss today. Sure, and I think a lot of people will probably use a lot of the terms interchangeably or have heard them used conversationally or even maybe not so conversationally, a term like latex and acrylic, uh, modified urethane, a hybrid xylene, xylene. Yep. Um, and epoxy. You know, Again, all of those become very generic terms for an adhesive or a glue. Yeah. So, so let's talk about some of those and why that's important, um, maybe to a salesperson, maybe to an installer, maybe to you know, customer service or, or whatever. Because really, if we don't understand the, the difference, you can see a, a bucket of adhesive, right? Right. And you're like, I mean. Why do we need all of these a, different yeah, buckets of adhesive? Four, it's, it's glue. It's a four gallon pail with right. some glue in it, right? Mm -hmm. um, but as we look at those different chemistries, they are very different, they right? Are. So when we take a look at a latex, for example, um, so let's start there. What Walk me through kind of what a latex is and what its use is. Sure. So, I mean, a latex is sort of your entry level adhesive. It's the most basic of adhesives. It's a water-based product. Um, I'm sure most people, I use the paint reference, most people are familiar with latex-based paints. It's water. It has a high concentration of water in it. Water is very inexpensive. Not a lot of chemistry in water. Um, so it again is that entry level type product, um, but it's a certainly a fine product if you're putting down maybe an entry level type floor or a broad loom type adhesive where you know you've got you know, a good quality product that's going over it, so you don't need a lot of science and technology. Yeah. And from a price point standpoint, that's also going to be a big difference too. So if you look at something that you know is price A versus something else that's price Z, and you've got a big spread in price point. That's usually why, is it just does yeah. not have a lot of that science to it. It's mostly water. Yeah, so, and, and you mentioned a latex is typically used like in a carpet because most carpet is breathable, right? Correct. So it allows, like if there is moisture in concrete or something, it allows it to kind of pass through and out right. instead of trapping it, which would make it have all sorts of fun issues, so. Right, well, and I guess let's talk about that too because, it, and you use the reference, the backing of carpet is breathable. So again, that latex having a high degree of water in it, that water is going to evaporate through that breathable backing on that carpet. And then what's left on the floor is what's left of the good stuff that's going to help right. you know, hold that carpet to that, that substrate. Yeah, 
So latex, um, if I understand right, is kind of our entry level, right? And, Very much and, so. And there's not really such a thing as like 100% latex adhesive, right? It's all like there's latex mixed with other things. There's latex mixed yeah. with other things, absolutely. Um, and then and then you mentioned acrylic, right? So I did. Uh, tell me a little bit more about acrylic adhesives. So acrylic is really where you start getting into some of the science and the technology of an adhesive. So we can add acrylics to latex products to have kind of like a, a, a soup, if you will, where you're adding different ingredients in and you're getting a different layer of uh, performance to those products. You're getting things that are going to set up a little bit harder. They're going to have much better bond strength. Um, your acrylics are also going to dry a little bit harder. Um, so they're going to, again, have that tenacity that you're going to want and a little bit more of that science so um, again from a and we're not going to talk about price but if you're talking about trade-up stories you know latex being entry level acrylics are going to be your next logical step right. where there's a little bit more science and a little bit more magic that happens yeah and and you know we probably should have talked about it today maybe we'll come back and define the term hybrid at some point but oh, we can do that i think it kind of goes you mm -hmm. know hopefully most people know what the what the word hybrid right. means um, but a lot of these, you know, as you look at the chemistries, you, you will have like hybrid acrylics or hybrid latex even sometimes. But um, but that's a good way to look at it is kind of that entry level mix. acrylic mm -hmm. then kind of takes it mm -hmm. up a notch. So acrylics, um, really those do a lot better job of, of a lot of things being, like you said, bond strength, um, moisture, you moisture, know, tolerance. moisture resistance. Yeah. Yes. Um, not necessarily blocking. Not blocking, no. Nope. It just means that they're not going to re-emulsify as quickly if water is introduced to it. So There's another term we should add to our list. Re-emulsify. Oh my <laughs> gosh, these programs are getting longer right? and longer. Part, well, we said three-part series. Yeah, It'll well. be part seven and counting, right? I only signed up for three, so that's all you get from me. <laughs> Deal. We'll take it. We'll take it. We'll see how quick we can go. All so right. speaking of, we've talked about latex and acrylic. Um, what about urethanes? Yeah, so urethanes, um, again, another term that I think is used very generically in the flooring world. Um, you think of a urethane and it's going to be um, typically used on a hardwood flooring installation. It's a very hard set uh, product. It is very unforgiving. Um, installers have had to use it because there hasn't been any new technology, again, until about now. But urethanes are your most basic of adhesives that dry really hard that provide that subset of installation for specifically a hardwood floor. Um, it was a, another flooring or another adhesive that was kind of developed by accident. Um, mm. And you think about it whenever you're installing a hardwood floor on concrete, very popular yeah. in you know, uh, residential and even commercial construction, um, that floor is almost always a urethane product. And um, if you've ever installed a urethane product, highly viscous, you know, it just is a, the bear yeah. to, to play with, but it definitely serves its purpose and it will not always, come apart. I always think of, you know, and, and I'm sure there's ones that don't smell as bad, but I always think of the smell when right. I think urethane. You know, it's yeah. like you, oh, you pop think that the... lid. It's kind of like that rubber cement. Like it's got a very distinct, you. you know. I know. So. Although I like the smell of rubber cement. I don't necessarily love the smell well, of see, urethane. see, you were that kid. I, I told you I was the glue <laughs> sniffer. I was. I wasn't that kid, but you were, yeah, I, I guess. Yeah, so. I was the glue sniffer. So, uh, you know, we'll go find a bucket of urethane for you yeah. after, this, <laughs> after this is done. Um, and then, you know, we've got epoxies too, right? So we do. Uh, I feel like there might be a little bit of confusion epoxy. So tell us a little bit about epoxies. Well, and it's confusing, but they're also very, very similar. I mean, the color of them is sometimes very similar. Urethane is usually, you know, kind of that amber type color and epoxies are sometimes that amber type color as well. But an epoxy actually relies on the chemistry to happen when you put the two things together. Urethanes come, you know, already assembled and that um, chemistry is gonna happen while it's in the bucket and then on the floor. Right. Whereas an epoxy, you're mixing two things together. You got a part A and a part B and they build heat, and that heat is what helps make that chemical reaction happen. Um, again, very basic, um, but they're great for um, retarding water. You think about epoxies being used primarily specified around floor drains, or in a supermarket situation where you have uh, misters in a produce section. Those provide an incredible water-resistant bond, and again, they are a bear to work with. 
very unforgiving. You have a very short working time, another term that we're probably going to talk about at some point. I think that one's on the list, yep. yeah. Um, they're impossible to clean off of anything that you don't want them to stick to. So um, that's also a challenge. And then they also have a very short, um, again, that, that working time, you have to you know spread it and yeah. go. Yeah, that pot life. Yes. Yeah. So really, that's a good way to think about it, right? A urethane is, um, and I'm not a chemist, so bear with me, but stable, right? In the pail, it's a stable formula that Mm -hmm. that is there versus an epoxy is highly reactive. Correct. And so when you start mixing A and B, that reaction starts taking place. So you can't just ship it in in a one part, you know, one component. So and once you mix it, you have to spread it. You can't put the lid back on it and you know go back and use it later. And a lot of times, it's going to set up in minutes. Yeah. Yeah, and, and they're very specific too. It's like, you yeah. know, mix parts A and B with this sort of paddle at, this tool you know, at the speed. 300 RPMs right. for mm-hmm. five minutes. And, you know, it's like a baking show. Yep. You know, I'm expecting Martha Stewart to pop out or something. <laughs> so every time I read those directions. Um, and then let's, let's take a look then moving past epoxies to um, what we titled hybrid silane. But I think this is one of the more... Uh, one of the ones that may have sim- several terms for it, right? Yeah. That you'll hear, but I think they all refer to the same thing. So what what's a hybrid silane? So a hybrid silane, and again, you know, term is used interchangeably, whether it's a modified urethane. I mean, that may be a term that's more familiar to some people versus a hybrid silane, but it's all the same. It's like adhesive versus glue. It means pretty much the same thing. So we talked about, you know, the epoxies, and um, the urethanes, you know, being very unforgiving. Um, we did. We talked a little bit about the odor, um, that, you know, very difficult to work with. So you think about those negative things of a urethane, but then you add in some of the more forgiving um, silanes or the acrylics and the things that help make a product a little bit more user friendly. Cuts down on VOCs. Um, it's also a little bit more potentially elastomeric. Um, right. So it that's remains, a fun one. That's a very fun word. We'll get there soon. I'm sure we will. <laughs> um, so it also um, is easier to install. Um, it's also great because it, it doesn't require personal protection equipment. Like if anyone was to read the installation instructions for either an epoxy or a urethane, which we just talked about, they'll say right on there, you know, gloves, a respirator, eye protection, all of these things, because these products, those products are highly caustic and contain a lot of VOCs. Yeah. Another another term. And isocyanates. And isocyanates. Yeah. And the isocyanates um, are also a negative and can cause indoor um, air quality issues, can cause um, asthma with some installers if they're sensitive to that kind of thing. So the hybrid silanes, modified urethanes, these are the next generation of all of the performance of some of those products, but in a much more installer-friendly, user-friendly type product. Um, They won't etch the surface. If you get it on the face of a piece of hardwood that you're putting down, it's not going to eat away at that finish. You can just wipe it off with a damp cloth or mineral spirits. Again, very, very user friendly and the preferred route for those savvy specifiers or um, installers that really kind of want the next best thing in an adhesive with a nod to the environment and to the installer that's installing it. Yeah. So, you know, you've said next generation or next best, which is true, but actually that chemistry has been around a little while, right? We actually um, launched that in 2006, I think. Right. Uh, So it is a lot newer than like an epoxy or urethane, but it's definitely been around long enough to be tested. It has. Yes. It's not new or, you know, uh, yeah. Not vetted and, and tried and true, but it's been around since, to your point, 2006. I um, mean, we're very proud of that fact, but it's becoming uh, a lot more popular for all the reasons that we talked about, about, you know, it not having yeah. isocyanates and being more user friendly. So it's getting a lot more attention. Yeah. And it's kind of having its moment. Yeah. So the day for hybrid silanes is here. It is. You heard it. Um, heard it here first, right? Uh so, you know, you mentioned some terms um, when we were talking about the different types of adhesives, and let's talk about a couple of those today before we run out of time. Okay. Um, and then we will be continuing, you know, obviously, you know, next time we'll be talking about a lot more terms as well. So, but elastomeric, <clears throat> if I could speak now, yes. it's my turn, right? It elastomeric. Is. Um, and that's a term I feel like a lot of people probably have heard in the industry, but maybe not all of them know. So. What well, is that? And it's not even an, an industry-related term. It just means it's something that's flexible. I um, mean, think of a rubber band. It's elastomeric. It remembers. Right. It moves back. 
Um, why is it important with adhesives? Um, it's a really cool thing when adhesives remain elastomeric because it's going to move and change a little bit with its environment. So you think about you know seasonal changes. If you're in um, a dry or an arid environment or a, um, an area where you've got high humidity or you get those seasonal changes, that adhesive kind of remains elastomeric and, yeah. and changes. And it also kind of remains a little bit um, soft or, or rubbery. Yeah. I guess are, those are some just generic terms to also define elastomeric. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, kind of like you're saying, if you have especially a, a flooring product that's sensitive to temperature, humidity, like let's say a hardwood mm -hmm. floor, like you mentioned with a, with a urethane is, is that like hard. super hard set, mm -hmm. right? Um, whereas a hybrid silane or modified urethane or however you, mm -hmm. you know, want to go about it has that elastomeric property where as that wood expands or contracts, it the goes with it, is going right? to move with it. And that's, actually, that's a great example. So we think about, you know, a hardwood installation. You have part of it that was installed with a urethane. You have part of it that was maybe installed with an elastomeric type product. If that wood changes dimensionally, because we all know that wood will change, grow and change with different seasonal um, temperatures and humidity, that floor could or that board could pop off because that bond is so incredibly rigid, it does not have any forgiveness an elastomeric type adhesive, it's going to hold, as that wood changes dimensionally, it's yep. also going to change with that piece of wood. So that's an important term to know, but like you said, pretty basic. Pretty you know, basic. Rubber band. Yeah, it's a rubber ba band. Bouncy ball. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, what about cross-linking? You know, that's a term we hear a lot too when it comes to adhesives and the, the type, oh, this one fully cross-links. What, yeah, what's, what's going that on mean? There? So I, I think I used the word magic previously as we were chatting, but this is really magic when it comes to <laughs> adhesive. This is where, you know, a lot of scientists and I mean, I'm, I'm using this as an example of what cross-linking really looks like, but it's when you take, you know, basically a part A and a part B and they will cross-link to form that type or that hard set bond. It could be a firm set bond, but that's where you get that bond. I keep using the word bond, but that's what right. happens is um, high quality adhesives have that cross-linking capacity to actually hold your flooring in place. Um, bond to the substrate, whether you're gluing over a wood or a concrete substrate or metal substrate, whatever yeah. you are. But that's that's the magic, is the cross-linking. So, uh, it is chemistry, not magic. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, but I love that you refer to it as magic. But you said part A and part B, and I just want to make sure uh, that I'm not confusing or that someone else might not confuse, because an epoxy has a part A and part B, Correct, right? right. So when you're saying part A and part B in a cross-linking, you're talking about inside of itself inside of it's, itself it's it's cross-linking and in, internally internally correct right. yes and thanks not, for clarifying and not an external cure. yes you're not adding part a and part b yeah. this is this is the magic in the bucket but then once you spread it on yep. the floor and the benefits of that you know really it gives you a better typically a better bond right like it a does. stronger bond because it is cross-linking um there's even and hybrid it is science there's i know and it is and science is magic science right? is magic <laughs> so um <laughs> You know, there are adhesives, and, and we talked about that term hybrid, right, that have like a hybrid cross-linking system. Um, we even have, you know, one that cross-links most of the way to, to like a hard set, mm -hmm. but then but then stops at a point. So it retains certain benefits of one, but then, you know, still has benefits of, of a fully cross-linked. So, I mean, you, you talk about science and chemistry and, and, and maybe it is magic, you know, it, at the end of the day. It is. So. I think it's magic. I prefer magic over science. I mean, it sounds cooler, right? <laughs> right. Exactly. So, uh, you know, those are kind of the fun, couple fun terms. Let's look at a couple that may not be quite as fun, but definitely are important. Okay. So isocyanates, right? We mentioned those. Um, you find isocyanates in, in all traditional urethanes. By no means is that the only place they are, but in the, in the world of flooring, that's where we see that term the most often. Right. Uh, what are isocyanates and why are they bad? So isocyanates are actually the thing that helps urethanes be urethanes and cure to that really hard set. So that is kind of the vehicle that provides some of that magic on the urethane side. But again, there's a lot of downsides to the isocyanates that, you know, they are uh, volatile, that they have an odor to them, that they do require personal protection. They can cause asthma. Um, they, again, talk, they etch to your surface of your flooring product. They destroy your tools, all of those things. But 
the isocyanates, again, are what help make a urethane adhesive do its job. So it's an evil necessity in right. a urethane, but that's why the modified silanes or the hybrid type products are kind of the better option because it does not contain the isocyanates. Right. Yeah, so a true urethane, the, the, the urethane chemical backbone, right, is then terminated with the isocyanates. Right. And but, but like you said, they etch the surface of wood. They are actually, isocyanates are the number one cause of work-related asthma. They are. So it's huge. Um, they're considered a carcinogen. Mm -hmm. So not to, not to um, people after the fact, but if you're touching them. So like you said, personal protective equipment. So right. if an installer isn't using gloves mm -hmm. or isn't doing what they're supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. um, that can be a risk as well. Uh, and then of course you mentioned odor. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of stuff with isocyanates and um, you know, I think Europe kind of led the charge on that. California has definitely started picking definitely. that up and we're seeing that roll through. So isocyanates are really, um, I'll be hesitant when I call it the new asbestos, but they are on that on that list of things that if there's an alternative. There are better options. Like a hybrid silane. Correct. Uh, that we can move to. So, exactly. you know, definitely worth noting, there's still a ton of installers that choose, you know, urethane products and, and that's, it's probably gonna be that way for a while. Yes, urethanes are not gonna go but, away. A lot of people love them. They're familiar with them. They know how to handle them. They know how to use yep. them. And but if someone knows but if you what know, isocyanates are and if you now care, you know. Yep, now now you can uh, start talking about products maybe that don't contain those. Right. So, you know, one other thing, um, and, and the last one we'll define today, is volatile organic compounds. Yes. Um, which a lot of people know as VOCs. Right. Um, kind of a huge uh, area in our world in flooring. You know, we, we have certifications for all these things. And um, if, if you missed it, go back and watch uh, last month's Taylor Time Live, where we had an expert on discussing all of the um, kind of benefits of sustainability, sustainable products, certifications, all that stuff. It was it was a really cool episode. Um, but VOCs, give me a quick rundown on those. Sure, VOCs, and everybody thinks that VOCs are a bad thing; that it's a negative. But actually, I mean, VOCs is anything that produces an odor. So you think about peeling an orange, and yep. you get that that whiff of citrus. Well, that's basically a VOC. But I love the smell of orange. Yeah. Um, same thing, perfumes, hairsprays, all of those things, they can all contain volatile organic compounds. Um, but again, we're talking about adhesives. So um, VOCs, again, just anything that produces an odor. So we talked about urethanes being very high on a VOC scale. Your latexes and your acrylics are going to be lower on a VOC scale. So they're going right. to produce um, less offensive odors or produce less odors. Um, those are products that are going to be easier from a sustainability standpoint for achieving certain certifications, whether yep. it's CRI, Green Guard, those types of things. But um, again, I just wanted to kind of clear up the VOC is not necessarily a, a bad thing. Correct. Yeah. Um, when it comes from products, though, uh, a lot of the products that go inside of the building envelope, Correct. that's where when those start to add up and you have so many products with so many, you know, off-gassing of so many different mm -hmm. VOCs, and uh, we talked about indoor air quality last month as well with Kim, um, but really the amount of time that we spend, especially as Americans indoors, mm -hmm. right? And then you combine that with all of these things that have VOCs. And so in the world of adhesives, the more we can keep those VOCs down, the better off we are. Right, so. and how quickly they dissipate is also a benefit as well. Yep, so, well Shelly, lots of great information today. Um, it's fun as a three-part series. Okay, believe thanks, it or for not. The, thanks for the warning. <laughs> so, uh, so we will continue this um, next month, which uh, will be June. June. So join us, join us in June as well as July. Uh, we'll be finishing up this three-part series on the science of selling adhesives. Um, that is all the time we have for today. I really want to thank you for taking the time to join. I hope you learned something useful. If not, at least had a good laugh. Um, Stay tuned. I encourage you to go check us out on social media, follow us, see what we're up to. Um, feel free to like and share as well. Uh, and remember at Taylor Adhesives, we're with you every step. <laughs>